Okay, uh, moving on here from the last video. Um, so we talked about some of these basic subatomic particles, electrons, protons, and neutrons, how we can identify the atomic number, how we can identify the mass number as it relates to a specific element. Um, down at the bottom of the page, I've got um, a couple examples here, and we'll have to talk about something new because we haven't talked about how to figure out how many electrons are present just yet. Um, so we want to know how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in each of the following atoms. So we've got 32 and then the symbol for phosphorus there. So that would be phosphorus with a mass number of 32. So let's start with that one. Now, based on the element symbol, that's gonna allow us to figure out how many um, protons are in that particular atom. So if I go to the periodic table, and there's a nice periodic table in your textbook. Um, if you have one to print out, that can be helpful as well. But phosphorus, and how well you can see this on, there we go. Phosphorus is over here. It's kind of on the right side of the periodic table, but up above the capital P for phosphorus is a 15. So that 15 would be the atomic number. So there are 15 protons in any atom of phosphorus. Now, once we know how many protons there are, we can use that in conjunction with the mass number to figure out how many neutrons there are. So this superscript before the P, that 32, that's the mass number. If you take that mass number and subtract the number of protons, that will be how many neutrons there are. So if there's 15 protons, but the mass number is 32, that means there must be 17 neutrons in that atom of phosphorus 32. Now, the third subatomic particle, the electrons, the key to recognizing how many electrons there are is charge of an atom. So the mass number appears as a superscript before the symbol for a particular element the charge will appear as a superscript after the symbol for an element so in all three of the cases here there isn't any charge shown and if there's no charge shown that means that is a neutral atom and if it's a neutral atom it has to have the same number of positively charged subatomic particles has negatively charged subatomic particles. So if we're looking at a neutral atom, once we've figured out how many protons are in there, that is also how many electrons are in there. So there are 15 electrons in this atom of phosphorus as well. And I'm, I use the symbol here that's common for electrons, which is a lowercase e with a little negative sign superscripted by it. Okay, now we can do the same thing here for the other elements, so cobalt 60. Let me put the 32 up there just for the phosphorus. Um, and not just C, CO for cobalt. Um, if we find cobalt on the periodic table, and here it is in the middle, cobalt has an atomic number of 27. So that would be 27 protons. Right? The mass number was 60. If we subtract 27 from 60, that would be 33 neutrons. Right? And since it is neutral, there's no charge shown. That would mean it would have to have 27 electrons, right? 27 negative charges to balance out or counteract the 27 positive charges and leave the overall atom neutral. Um, the last one is iodine-131. Now iodine is all the way over on the right side of the periodic table and kind of down closer to the bottom. Um, the atomic number here for iodine is 53. So any atom of iodine has 53 protons. If we take 131 and subtract 53, and I'm not uh, super positive of my subtracting ability, so I'm going to go to the calculator for that one. We get 78. Right, so again, mass number minus atomic number is the number of neutrons. So there are 78 neutrons in that iodine atom. And then it is neutrally charged, so if there's 53 protons, there must be 53 electrons in there. Now, charge is not always going to be neutral. That's something we'll encounter pretty quickly as we progress through this chapter. Once the charge varies from neutral, that could indicate extra electrons, or it could indicate there are more protons than electrons, which would mean we've lost electrons, because... A lot of chemistry is electrons moving. The, uh, the nucleus doesn't change a whole lot, at least in traditional chemistry. Um, there are nuclear reactions and that sort of thing. 
that uh, we'll get into much later um, in Chem 2, actually. Okay, moving on to the next page. Um, we've got an example here that is factoring in mass number, atomic number, um, and this idea we just talked about in terms of isotopes. And maybe before I dig into this uh, problem, I should mention there's subscripts here. Um, so in this case, we don't know the identity of the elements. That's part of the um, design of the question. And if you don't have the element symbol, then you can't just look on the periodic table and see the number of protons. So atomic number or number of protons can also be described with a subscript um, coming in front of the atom. So this would be 15 protons, 16 protons, 16 protons, for example. Um, it's pretty unusual to do that in chemistry because we have the element symbol generally. So how many protons is usually not in question, right? unless you're asking a question like this where we're trying to hide that. So which of the following would be classified as isotopes? Right? And then in addition to that, we want to identify what X is, what element it would be represented by the X for each of these. Now, if we think back to our definition of isotopes, they have to be of the same element. So the only way that two compounds can be of the same element is if they have the same mass number, or sorry, same atomic number. Um, so the ones that would be isotopes would be the last two here. They have the same atomic number, which means they're the same type of element, um, but they do have different mass numbers. So these would be, so your isotopes here would be 31x and 32 with the atomic number 16. Now, for each of these, we can use the atomic number to figure out the identity. So again, we go to the periodic table, but this time we're kind of working backwards. We want to find the element that has 16 protons, or 16 for its atomic number. That is sulfur, or capital X. So this would be sulfur 31 and sulfur 32, the two isotopes of sulfur. Now, the other element listed here with 50, or 50, 15 as its atomic number, that's an atom of phosphorus. So again, in the periodic table, we can find that atomic number, link it to the symbol. So this is phosphorus 31. So the sulfurs are isotopes, the phosphorus is a completely different element. Um, the fact that one of the sulfurs has the same mass number as the phosphorus is really just a coincidence. It doesn't imply anything about any sort of uh, chemical properties. Okay. So, got a little more time here before I'll have to stop this video. Let's define atomic mass. We won't be able to get to the problem. That'll have to have to scoot into a future video. Um, but atomic mass is another thing that we find in the periodic table. So, we talked before about this symbol in the periodic table, and we had our carbon here, and we had the atomic number up above. The atomic mass generally is going to appear below the atom in the periodic table. Now, the periodic table that I have has 12.01 for the atomic mass of carbon, and that's worth thinking about because the atomic mass is not an integer, so it is not just a count of the number of particles present, like the atomic number is, or like the mass number is. There's a little bit more going on there in terms of the atomic mass. And we'll need to think about, right, where does this number actually come from? How does it relate to the subatomic particles of our particular element? But we will save that for the next lecture.